Okay, and at this point, I will turn it over to Manuel to give an overview. Let me change the presenter here. Okay, Manuel, take it away. Yeah, okay. Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, as Elaine already said, my name is Manuel Andrade Aparicio. I'm the operations manager here in New Mexico. And well, I hope you find this webinar interesting and that every information I give to you today will make the, well, your daily operation a little bit easier. Um, I would like to start with some background. Um, in New Mexico, here we are a Mexican social enterprise. We provide solar photovoltaic products and services to rural communities in Mexico. Uh, with this, we are able to provide energy access in our country and promote the use of renewable energy to further develop the, our country. What we basically do is we, we sell the solar photovoltaic systems to the communities through very accessible credits that we grant to, well, to all of our clients in, in these communities. Um, a little bit of background, we, we've come to understand that, that data is, is the basis for every informed decision. Here in New Mexico, we are able to source data directly from the field through the TarWorks application and, inform and information from Telecom. Telecom is a Mexican telegraph office uh, where, where our clients make their payments. We then use this data from the, the TarWorks application and from Telecom to analyze it in the Salesforce interface. We've divided this, this data in three types. Our financial data, the, the thanks to the TowerWorks application, comes in real time. Our commercial data, all of our sales, and our historical data, our growth, and, and more data that we'll be showing uh, later on. So I would like to start by talking about data sourcing and how we get all of our data from the field and from our, our partner, Telecom. First of all, we, we used to gather data in formats and then we, we went to Excel and did dynamic tables and graphs. As you can, as you can imagine, this, this was a lot of time. We started using TarWorks service for some time. Uh, we started sourcing this information from the field. And well, for, for those of you who do not know, the Salesforce, app, the, sorry, the TarWorks application is an application that you can go in, uh, and install it in your cell phone, and our community engineers, as we call our, our promoters in the field, can introduce information into their cell phone and it goes automatically into our system. So at first, we, we use this application for, for filling surface, for new sales, for maintenance records, for daily journals, for expense tracking, among others. Um, what we had to do at first was download this information from the TarWorks interface into an Excel file and then use a Salesforce connector to upload this data into Salesforce. This demanded a lot of time since it, it, it was not an automatic, uh, an automatic step and we had to, I mean, format all the information, change names, change columns. It was a little bit tricky. But then uh, something that TarWorks is, I, I think, very famous of is the survey mapping. Mapping the fields in each survey means that you can relate a field from a survey into certain object in Salesforce and you can show this information directly in Salesforce. This means information coming from the field is instantly transfer, transferred to Salesforce and can be visualized without further work. I, I would like to show you a little bit of, of our of the, um, of the surveys we, we have. Here, this is the Salesforce interface in its Taro module. So here you can see the surveys. Starting from here up are the surveys we manage. We have surveys for sales for new clients, sales for existing clients. Uh, we have sales for equipment we recover from the field if our clients do not make their payments in time, for example. We have other expense reporting survey, uh, a payment, well, this, is, this, is, this survey is used when, when, um, when a client says he has done a payment, but we do not have a record of it, we kind of make the, well, the case, no? Then we have a maintenance report, 
um, when we have other other types of surveys. I would like to show you how the information coming from a certain survey can be shown in Salesforce. For example, this survey, the, ex, uh, the expense reporting, when people answer this survey, they answer the following information. They relate the, the expense to a certain budget. They introduce the, the date of the, of the expense, the name of the expense. This is the type of expense, either if it's a transport, the rent of a, of the, of a local of our branch, uh, any service. Then they could say if, if the, the total amount and we'll fill in other type of information. This information goes directly and is directly linked to a certain account. This, for example, is the account of one of our branches in one of the states here in Mexico. When people do their expense, every expense is tracked and goes directly here. And it's, it is summed here. This is the total operation investment in this branch. This is in Mexican pesos. So you can see that every expense they do and every investment we do in this branch goes to this. We can also track an, another type of information, that is our investment in cost of goods sold. Here, with the sales we do every month, we multiply this by the cost of goods of each equipment and we can add it here. So at the end, we can visualize how, how much we have invested in certain branch. We can also track the payments received. As I said uh, before, we receive the payments through our, our partner Telecom. They, as I will show you right now, they give us this data in a TXT file every month, every two or three days. This is uh, the Telecom interface, as you can see. And here, they, they show us every two days how many repayments we have received from our clients. This match, we need to do it manually. We have to download these payments from, the, from this system, match them with the ID of the client, and then upload them into Salesforce. This is one of, of, of the future things we would like to do automatically, but right now it just has to be, well, manually. So here, those, those repayments, come here and are added to the total payments received for this account. We do not just have one account. We can manage a lot of them that I would like to show you. Here in accounts, we have an account for each branch. And in each branch, we can track the payments received and the investment in operation and the investment in Cox. So we can track almost everything and see how our, our accounts are doing financially. Now, now that I talked about sourcing the data, I would like to, to talk to you about displaying this data. Salesforce has an amazing module called Panels. Um, let me just, that's right here. So when you have when you have all your data in Salesforce, you can build reports with that data. And with those reports, you can build these dashboards. This dashboard I, I did for this presentation, it basically shows our, some of our commercial data, our financial data, and our historical data. In commercial data, you can see that thanks to the surveys that the community engineers do in, this, in the TireWorks application, we can see how many installations they have made in certain period of time. So here are our installations um, in all, all history, our sales. This is, we also track the subsidy we get from governments. We track the upfront payments and the credits we've granted. I think this could be very interesting for you. We, we, we try to track the sales income per year or the installations per state. In terms of financial data, for me, these three dashboards are the most important. The first one is our active portfolio. This means that from our active credits, 
uh, this, this is our repayment rate. So usually if you have a high repayment rate, well, you, you're receiving good payments and in time. And if you have a low repayment rate, uh, we're, we, we, we will need to do something about the equipment that are not being paid. Here in Portfolio at Risk, you can see that we track all of our clients that are paying in time. 37 of our clients are paying in time. 18 are 30 days behind. 38% are 60 days behind. And 6% are uh, 6 months behind. So we can track all this information and do informed decisions quite quickly. Another very interesting graph that, that, that we, we do is this one. We analyze in time how we've come to rely more on our, the cost of our equipment instead of the subsidy of the equipment. Of the equipment. So in 2010, the cost was almost the same as the subsidy we received from the government. But nowadays, we sell the equipment and the subsidy is a little bit less. We can also track other kind of information, like the income by financer. This one is very interesting if you have a lot of finances and would like to see what part of your business comes from each financer. At, at the end, this is this you, you can you can configure as you as you want. We we chose to do this dashboard because they are the most significant to us, but you can do a lot of them. For example, here I will go to one of our branches dashboards. This is one of our branches in the south, in southeast Mexico. And here we can track how many, how many users we have in that branch, how many sales, the monthly sales per year. We can track how they did, I'm, I'm sorry this one is in Spanish, I just didn't have the time to translate it. Here you can track how, how they performed in the last three months. And how are they performing in this in this month? You can also track the debt owned by each group of of your portfolio. Here you have the the credits that are paying paying all right, the ones that are 30 days behind, 60 days behind, and six months behind. So basically, you can configure all your data as you wish. Now. I would like to talk about some questions that Elaine asked me to answer. Why did we choose Tarworks and how has it helped our process? Well, the Tarworks application and its easy integration with Salesforce are definitely the tools we need to put our data in place. When you have an application that sources your data from the field instantly and syncs it with, your, with the interface where you have your analysis, uh, for us, it's it's a it's like the the cherry on the top that made us made us work with Taro and with Salesforce. With this, we can see and analyze every aspect of the business as we want. Now, what have we been able to achieve? What with having our dashboards reflecting this diverse information, I would say that the best advantage is being able to make the accurate decisions in less time. Before, when we did every, every data analyze in Excel in our dynamic tables and graphs, it, it took almost one month maybe to make a, a decision about whether to start giving more credits in a branch or start taking them away. Today, we can implement a program of any type knowing that the information is going to be correct. We can stop selling a branch or even design a special offer to clients with certain profile that pay in time. One one of the analyze well one of the analysis we do today is analyze how women are paying better than men. In some states, this actually happens. In in some states, men are, are have better repayment rates, and in some states, women do. So we actually choose whether in some state or in the other we should start making a program that uh, that attacks this issue. And now, what, what would we have done differently if we had to do it over? In Salesforce, I, I don't know if all of you are using Salesforce, but you, can, you have objects. Either you have an account or a sales object or a repayment object. And Salesforce comes with these standard objects. If we had to do something differently right now, I think we would not be using the standard Salesforce objects, but instead generate our own since the standard ones are not as flexible 
in terms of relating the objects between them. For example, relating uh, a payment to sev uh, yeah a payment to several objects is more difficult if you are if you are using the standard Salesforce objects. But if you design your own, it will be a little bit more flexible. So um, I guess we will go to the questions round. I don't know, Elaine. Great, thank you so much, Manuel. This is super interesting. Uh, great to see examples of really great dashboards. So um, thanks for sharing. Um, I have a couple of questions here, but I want to make sure that um, all of your answer, or your questions are answered too. So um, again, if you have a question, um, just either raise your hand or type it into the chat or in the questions um, block, and then I will unmute you. Any questions? I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well I have one. Um, how do you actually import your um, the information that you're getting from Telecom, the text file? Um, how are you actually importing that data into Salesforce? Are you using okay, the tool so, or? So yeah. we, we get the TXT file from Telecom. What we do is we put it in an Excel. When, when the clients do their repayment at the office, at the Telecom office, they give their client code. So with this client code and the amount they paid on certain date, this is the information that comes in the TXT file. So we put it in an Excel and then upload it directly to Salesforce matching the client code. Okay, great. So um, everyone just uses that client code throughout their operations. Makes sense. Um, I know Miranda, you're curious about that. Do you have any, does that answer that question for you? Okay, I don't see any follow-ups. Um, okay, so you mentioned having good transparency into um, the types of customers that you have and like the repayment rates by gender. Have you actually made any kind of decisions based on this information? Not yet. We are right now in doing the research. Um, we just started uh, doing the survey to asking the, the gender. So we're just starting to get information by gender. I think we, we have right now like let's say 100 customers that we know their gender. I mean, you can always know the gender by their name, but not, not if you want to analyze a lot of data, you, you cannot go by name, you have to go by another type of information, and in this case, it will be the gender. We, we would need more information to actually make a good decision, but by the looks of it, we know that there is one state in Mexico where women pay better than, than men. That's for now. Okay, great. Um, can you also talk a little bit about um, how these forms have been received by the field officers or the com community engineers? You, you mean the surveys? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I can show, um, yeah. Usually what, what we do is we program the, the survey. I would like to show you, for example, a survey for a new client, a sale to a new, cl a new client. So uh, um, in their sale, when I create a, a survey here in Salesforce and, and sync it to a job, the job is automatically synced to the community engineer cell phone. For example, in this one, when they open this job, they will have to fill in the name, last name, client code, gender, age, uh, the community, and 
the municipality where the where, where they're doing the sale. After that, we usually ask some credit history information. Uh, I mean here, and then a little bit uh, about their house. How long have they lived in in that in that place? Uh, if they have people who know about electricity in their in the community, this then comes in handy when talking about maintenance. Uh, we ask for a, an opinion from the community engineer if, if they think that the credit is going to be a, a good one, a healthy one, or that it, we're not going to get a good repayment rate. After that, we start asking for sales data, like the name of the branch where they're doing the sale, the type of sale, either, either if it's an equipment or a component for a system, then yeah, then we go to more specific data like the type of equipment, the power, in, in this case of, of the solar panel, uh, the, the serial number from the equipment. These, these are the basic things that we ask. And then, well, here, here is the, the amount, the method of payment, the upfront payment, the number of months of the credit, etc. And then this information is linked directly to a sale, for example. Here I have the sale of Maria Fernanda. And you can see that all, all the information that I just asked in the, in the survey comes here. Here we have the name, the community, the municipality, the state, the call of the client. And if, you, if I go a little bit downwards, we, I have the type of sale, the type of equipment that is sold, and all information about the credit the upfront payment, the total amount, the amount of the credit. And you can play with this information. You can do fields with formulas and calculate different things. For example, this is our one of our most important fields, the client situation. This one is a field that tells us if uh, credit is in its healthy state or is delayed by some days or, or some months even. So we can analyze data very easy with this. That's great. Um, let me actually unmute Esther Altorfer from Sistema Biobolsa. Um, she has a question that's related to this. I don't know if this answered it, but um, Esther, I'm going to unmute you now. Okay. Um, yeah. So Esther, I think you're on. So. Think yes, hi, hello, uh, Manuel. I think part of my answer could Part of my question was already answered by the chart you just showed about um, tracking the key values. So um, I think we can um, skip this one. Uh, regarding the staff in the field, I, I guess they use some sort of smartphones or do they use paper and then input it, the data into a computer? Okay. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And then the last question is whether there is within Salesforce or TerraWorks a sort of a mapping, mapping option to locate the different clients. For example, to schedule the loan collections and to see how close or far they are from another. Okay, as for your first question, uh, it, about two years ago we used to do it in paper and then input it in the computer. Right now, the advantage with the TaraWorks application in the in the smartphone is is where is where the the community engineers fill in the survey. Surveys that I do in Salesforce are automatically synced to the community engineer's smartphone, and they can answer it right there in the place where they do the sale. One advantage of the application is that you do not have to be connected to the internet. If you can sync the data later, so that is very good. And as for your second question, right now we are not using GPS tracking. I think that there is a module, module that exists for that, but maybe Elaine can answer that question better than I. Sure. Let me uh, jump in here. So there is the ability to capture GPS coordinates for each of the field officers. So um, as they're in the field, they can press a button, and then that'll locate, um, they'll record where they are. Um, so you you can do that. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, no Esther. 
Okay, uh, next question is from Kate at TechnoServe. I'm just going to unmute you, Kate. You're unmuted now. Oh, okay. Um, hi, everyone. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about how easily or quickly or even provide us with a demonstration, if you, if you care to, on uh, building a new report and adding it to the dashboard. Uh, and if you run into any moments in which you need staff capacity or if you already have staff capacity to do some higher level programming in Salesforce in order to pull out some of the reports that you're looking for. Okay, well, what I could do is maybe pull up a, a report about gender and do a dashboard about gender if you want. That would be interesting, I think. Um, and as for people who, well, staff that, that work with with Salesforce programming, we do not have right now. It's just me and, and another guy here at the office. We're the ones that, that manage all the Salesforce information. But I think in the future, we would need someone to program Salesforce because there is, I, I think that the capabilities of the, of the system are endless, and we're not exploiting not even 20%, I think. Um, OK, so let me, I think. I already have a gender analysis. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So I'll start by doing the, the report. You go here and do a, a new report, a sales report. I'm just going to add a filter for a certain branch. And for all of our sales that we have in that branch. Okay, and then in this report you have to do a graph. So you can show the information and I'm gonna save it. Okay, so I now I have the report. I can see that in, in this branch, there are more, more male users than female users. And then I would go and do the, the panel. The panel. And here, I can choose every type of, of, of panel I want. I will try to do this one. I'm not an expert at this, so <laughs> please be patient. <laughs> uh, We still, I think we still have a lot to learn here. When I'm trying to modify. Okay, so it should be loading. In the meantime, I can show you a little other other dashboards that we've created.
for example. Uh, this one, this one is a branch that we, we have a project with the government. So almost everything we do with them has a subsidy. And instead of tracking sales, we track installations here. I mean, as you can see, you can modify this as you want. I think I have one for our financers. And if not, I should be doing that. <laughs> No, not right now. Let me see. Oh, I don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. It's strange. Actually, it should work if it worked in the report. Yeah, it usually yeah. is very, very quick. Our internet connection is not that good right here. But usually it doesn't take some that, that much time. I think um, the gist of it is that you create um, your reports first, and then your dashboards or panels, in this case, is really a collection of those reports. Um, and so as long as you have the reports um, created, um, you can just kind of layer them together in these, um, in these dashboards. Mm -hmm. So thanks for that really great demo. Uh, that was super no, fast, no. actually. <laughs> um, OK, let me move on. Hopefully, Kate, that answers your question. You can um, follow up with me after if you want um, to talk more about the, those reports. OK, so uh, let me move on to Miranda. She has a question about the data um, security. Um, as you're collecting okay. this kind of financial information from the field. Um, let me just unmute you. Miranda, go ahead. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I apologize. I didn't catch the beginning of the presentation, and you may have covered this or alluded to it in some way, but we are also collecting or looking to collect financial information about loan repayments. Um, and I just wondered what steps you've taken to try to protect women's, well, protect your client's identity and make sure that um, there's minimal chance of, of this kind of sensitive or financial information being um, accessed by other people, either when you're syncing stuff or uh, within Salesforce. Okay. Um, what, what we did at the beginning was define profiles of the people here at the office that will have access to the information. Right now, the only ones that can modify the Salesforce interface are the, the our CEO and myself. So that's for, for the interface, security in the interface, that's, that's how we covered it. As far as the confidentiality of our clients, we, we never disclose any names. We actually do everything with the ID of the, of the client. Uh, we always treat them as codes, so we do not have to show their names. It, it does come with a name because since our community engineers have a very personal relationship with our clients, we need to know their names. And we need to tell them, hey, this guy, uh, whatever his name is, uh, is, is late on his payment. So you have to go to the community and talk to them. But as for financials and the security of, of our financial data, I guess that what we do is work with profiles as well. Not everyone has the, has the ability to access every object. For example, the object of accounts, that is the one that has, has the more sensitive information, can only be, be, be accessed by managers here at the office. Um, and actually, I can show you how to define the profiles. You, could, you can see, um, oh yeah, it's over here. You can see this, right? Yeah. OK, so when we go here to user configuration, you can see profiles. And Salesforce, Salesforce have, has standard uh, profiles, but you can, you can do your, your own as you wish. So we have a solution administrator 
the contracts administrator and the system administrator. These are the three types of administrators. Then we have uh, someone that does a database. This is a person that works with us and this is the only person that can access all the information. Uh, Manuel and me, our CEO, we have the, 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 this, uh, this profile. Then we have a commercial profile that can only access, access sales but not operative information. We have a regional manager or regional representative. This is actually one of the four. We have four people as regional managers in, that manage our different branches in, in the states of Mexico. They can access this profile and they can see things as budgets for the branch. They can see sales in their branch, but they cannot see anything else. They cannot even see other branches. Uh, we have here a technical profile. This is for the community engineer. They can access through the computer in each of our branches and have data from their clients. Um, this, this could be the name or, the, or even the, their, state, their status. And they can also um, go over to the budgets of their branch, but only to make an expense report, not to modify. So you can actually make quite a, quite, quite, quite a, I mean, it, it can be quite secure if you, if you modify the profiles. I don't know if this answers your, your question. Yeah, it helps a bit. Thanks very much. Thank Thanks, Miranda. Um, let me turn now to Andrew Zacharias at Trees for the Future. Andrew, you're on. Thanks a lot. Uh, first, I want to say thank you, um, Manuel, for taking the time today to share your experiences with us. It's all very interesting. Um, so thanks for giving us the opportunity to know a little bit more about what you're doing. Um, my question is, um, are there situations where community engineers or any mobile users at all um, need to access these dashboard reports? And if so, is this something that can be done through TileWorks? Um, uh, yeah, actually, that is one of our questions we have for TaraWorks. <laughs> we would like to show uh, there, there is a, um, a, a module in the application where, people, where the community engineer can, can track its record. It's, um, I mean, if it has submitted enough records for one, for one month, for example, this means that if he, if he makes I don't know, 10 sales in a month, he, he comes to his limit. So that is how we track him. This is one of a few dashboards that can be shown in the application. But as far as dashboards that they would be interested in accessing, every three months I generate a, a three-month report uh, dashboard and I send them directly to them. I, I do not let them enter the, the system and see them because if I do that, they could be able to see the reports of the other branches as well. And that is something I would not like because we manage different budgets uh, and we even have different salaries in different places because there's people with us that has been more time or are people that are new, even if they have the same position. So as for keeping our confidentiality in that aspect, I send them the reports they need to see. Okay, thank you. Great, and I can actually speak a little bit about um, the reporting, so or uh, providing dashboards, I guess, to access to them um, for field officers. So we have, um, actually this is probably a good place to announce this, but uh, we've just recently passed our security review for Salesforce. Um, and as part of that, we are upgrading to a new, safer, um, I guess a version of TerraWorks that has additional safety features to comply with um, Salesforce. Um, and so as part of that, um, we're switching all of the mobile users over to uh, what's called partner community licenses. They are a type of Salesforce license. But as part of that, you'll be able to log into, so as a field officer, you'll be able to log into a site, separate site, um, to view reports, so you won't have the access to build um, or create any of the, sur uh, the surveys or reports 
or dashboards, but you'll be able to see um, the created dashboards. So we're really excited about that. Okay. So look out for more um, communications around that in the coming month or so. Uh, we're hoping to release that um, by December. Perfect, perfect. Yep, great. Um, thanks, Andrew, for that question. Um, let me see here. Um, did you talk a little bit, um, May, about who exactly is using these dashboards? So um, you are, your CEO is, and then you mentioned that you actually send this out to people. Um, is it, like, who, what levels are using these dashboards right now? Okay. So right now, the ones that use the dashboards the most are Manuel, our CEO, myself in operations, and Ana Maria, she's our commercial director. She usually just sees sales and how, yeah, basically sales and how each branch is performing. And the fourth uh, person that sees it is a regional manager. This is one of the, this is an example of one that I, one report that I send each three months. It has commercial results, operation results, and statistical results. This is some of the data that they can see only of their branches. But right now, no one else is using dashboards in, in Salesforce. I, I, I think that most people here at the office think that it's, it's difficult to work with dashboards. But I, I think that once you get a, a hang of it, it's, it's pretty easy. You just need to see things very I mean, very objectively, it's, it's I mean, the, the dashboards will show whatever you ask them to show. So it's, I mean, for me, it's been very instructive. Great. I think that might be all the questions. I don't have any more here. Um, Actually, Manuel, did you have questions for any of the other participants about how they're using? Well, the yeah, I would actually like to, to know if they're using Towers and how they're using it, and if they're doing something like this in Salesforce, something that I might be missing that will help me a lot. I don't know if anyone has, has a, an advice. Let me actually um, switch the presenter back here. Okay. And then I can um, share who else is on here. There might be some others. This was just a list from um, early this morning. Okay. Actually, I'm curious, Jonah um, from Happy Noi in the Philippines, um, I know you've been using it for a while. Are you using uh, reports at all for tracking your operations? That'd be interesting. Um, Hello? Hi, Jonah. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hello, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, just curious, are you using reports for your operations in your surveys? Yes, yeah, we are using our um, last um, project of Happy Noi. Um, that's where we use uh, first time the tire works in Salesforce um, to generate the reports that we, uh, that the, our managers are asking us. So right now, um, uh, the reports that we 
that we generate is just the the list of the the attendees, and then where we have the sponsors. So we just filtered out um, per sponsor report. So it's just um, that um, not complex report from um, from now. Okay, so it's a list of attendees for now. Yes. Okay, that's great. Mm. Thanks also for conducting this kind of um, session. It's really helpful. <laughs> great. Yeah, hopefully um, everyone gets ideas from this. We just want um, you know, examples of people are doing some really cool things to kind of share so everyone gets a taste of what's possible. Um, yes. Great. Um, so I think maybe um, it doesn't seem like there are any other questions. Um, I might try to put you in touch with other people who are building uh, reports and dashboards as well, Manuel. Yes, definitely. Okay. Um, great. So if that's that, we can end early. Uh, feel free to um, email me with any questions that you may have. Um, and then if you're interested, Manuel can also send this presentation around. Uh, so just ping me afterwards as well for that, and I can send it. Um, and then I will also make this recording available online if you want to share it with your uh, colleagues. So um, thank you so much, Manuel. This was super interesting. Um, thanks for taking the time to uh, put this together and share with your fellow TerraWorks users. No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.